Hey, and welcome to the uh, Center Max Devil's Playhouse uh, commentary. This is for episode three. I'm Chuck Jordan, the uh, season lead. Most of us. I'm Mike Stemley. I wrote and did a little design on this episode. I'm Joe Penny. I did some design, a lot of design, and uh, screwed up some of the writing on this episode. <laughs> Hey, I'm Andrew Langley. I content programmed half this episode. I'm Dennis Lennart. I was a lead cinematic artist. Hey. Off to a great start. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Silence is awesome. Oh, his face is getting creepier. Ah! Oh, I want a doll of that, of a dead Max. Or a hat. Max's <laughs> brain. Yeah. It's a nice title sequence. Max? Hmm? Little buddy? So one so of the uh, target things for um, <clears throat> the games that are from the comics that we always kind of wanted to hit in the games was the uh, scene in Bad Day on the Moon when uh, Max gets zapped by a fence <coughs> and Sam is upset because that's one of the few moments where they drop the shtick and actually get poignant with it. So and I think this season we kind of did it several times over. Yeah, I think that was about the second of about four or five of these uh, screaming nose. But then we get crazy, out of control, noir Sam, which is something we put a pin on very early in the season that we wanted to get to. Yeah, we all knew we wanted to see Sam lose his sh and really get upset. Because his little buddy, the one thing that would really uh, make it unfunny. Yeah, I got to admit, when you guys first per pitched this, I was like a little worried because uh, I never seen Sam freak out and go crazy. I don't know if he ever did in the comics at all, or if he's always been kind of straight laced. And every, every now and then in the comics, he gets a little angry and at people, especially when he's compared to McGruff, uh, <laughs> starts biting people and then gets really embarrassed. Got it. <laughs> hey, look, instructions. Uh, yeah, we wanted to stretch Sam, and uh, we weren't sure how it would work with the voice acting, uh, just being angry, angry Sam, but he did a fantastic job with it. I think there's like a hint of it in the previous episode when uh, Max gets turned into a cow, and Sam has a horrible, like, no scream. And It was after I heard that, I was like, okay, so it'll be good. Because he'll freak out. And everyone wanted to do film noir takeoff. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Did we know originally if we were going to have Jacketless Sam? Or was that. Oh, no, that was a, actually an epic quickly. fight. Yeah. Props to Nick Herman. Yes, big yeah. props to Nick Herman and others who uh, pushed, pushed, pushed over time. Jake, too, was a, a big Jacketless Sam advocate. The animation on this guy is so good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, actually, with all this opening stuff, all the Act 1 stuff that, that Nick did um, is super awesome. It's like some of the coolest stuff we've ever done, I think. <clears throat> and yeah, it was, it was basically just Nick fighting for two months for just production purposes. I mean, there's so much uh, real estate and everything in here <laughs> yeah. that this ended up being the sort of the most polished, uh, attentive part of the game, but... Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, so much love and attention on this. Like, I love that scene. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, the feel of it's dead on and all the uh, reference shots that Joe had up around his uh, cubicle for a while. Yeah. Seemed like they really got it. Lots of fog and headlights and shadows. Yeah, getting that fog looking right was another thing we really cared about. And someone thinks you might know something about it. brain, huh? Well, I did see like you want to talk about how hard it was to turn this <laughs> dialogue into a dialogue puzzle? Well, actually, this is, you know, we, Joe and I worked on this for a while, making sure that we could do interactive dialogues that just kept rolling no matter what the player did. Um, and once we, you know, it w we were lucky that our tool had been recently uh, upgraded to a point where we could make uh, little snippets of dialogue flow nicely from one to the other. Uh, which made it a lot easier than it should have been, actually. Um, and we just, uh, between the Joe and I actually working on it for a while, we actually, it was quick. It wasn't that hard. I'm sure it was much harder for the guys implementing it than it was for us to design it. Yeah. What was cool, though, is that it did, like, I mean, even, I remember just reading the stuff 
like just seemed it was like ah sweet and we like we know exactly what we need to do and it all just sort of worked it's cool oh and who does the voice of this guy yeah Myas Myas speaking of people how do you pronounce his last name Fitzek I wonder what Fitzek to the tourist match the butt map the mustache is a creepy touch yeah Yep, Myas of uh, What Happens Next on Monkey Island fame. Yes, of What Happens Next on Monkey Island fame, and in turn a telltale. Yeah, he did a bunch of cinematic uh, stuff for this episode, too. Yeah, he did some uh, fantastic cutscenes for the episode, and is the voice of our tourist. Does a good... So what direction did you give... Because he's not German, right? He's just sort of ambiguously vaguely European. European yes. We, but for him, we just said like, "Be yourself." Yeah. Because, <laughs> because you know, he's he very often that sounds great. vaguely European. Yeah, versus... sort of bubbly. Did he make up those words? The, the no, European words. Or that was all Stanley. No. no. Yeah. Actually, I that took to... there were many takes to get uh, a Yeah, that one. Yeah. I love you so yeah, so yeah, that's something I wanted to see in a game for years. Yeah. 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 I say, I think I requested uh, that while he was driving, he should be drinking from a dog dish. Uh, <laughs> but that's maybe a little out. What, whatever happened to the uh, establishing shot? And yeah. it's also uh, uh, Nick, fight fight for Nick, Nick and Jake Rodkin win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was. I'm glad that got in. Absolutely, yeah. sense of place. Yeah. I love the animation of him slumped. I. I think I also wanted, like, I was hoping we'd have time to replace the entire uh, intro uh, title sequence of the scene to have a limpless, well, like a limp, lifeless Max in the seat next to Sam <laughs> during the whole title sequence, but there's just no way. This is a Maya's cutscene, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's so. That's right, yeah. this is a Maya's. It's pretty epic. Yeah. Lasers and magic spells and a uh, planetarium. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Paperweight has turned into Doctor Strange at some point here. <laughs> Sam! Get me out of here! This whole place smells like gorilla and patchouli. The realization of the brain and how he was going to talk and express himself, that was another huge back and forth evolution. Yeah, we definitely uh, raised the bar from the talking brain in the first episode, I think. Mm -hmm. people... Yes. Yeah, oh, Good. No, I was just going to say the brain did involve introduce a lot of complications. But, ah, look at that later. Yeah. yeah, that was probably the hardest thing I think from. Oh boy, yeah, he sure season, did. Probably. The presentation I think came yeah. off pretty well. Yeah, yeah. It but the complications of having that brain. Yeah. Oh boy. Blame me. I'm still trying to find the volume controls on this thing. Yeah, just a few different expressions and then that little mouth. Yep. Go quite a long way. Yep. Yeah, for the longest time, I don't think his expressions changed enough. And then we had to really figure out ways to bump it up. Yeah, make it a little more radical. Normally, the code of the freelance policeman frowns on stealing ancient brains. Desperate times call for icky measures. More brains! Wriggly. I don't know whether to be repulsed or use it as a neck massager. Hey, you. <laughs> Neck massager. Oh, the introduction of the, one of the breakout characters of season three. Yeah. yeah. People love Sal. They love Sal, and I'm very happy that that when we asked for a voice, we got exactly the voice we wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know I read review one review the other day where they do credit him as Patrick Warburton, but yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. Even though Patrick Warburton did play the tick, this is a roach. This Vegas trip, right? Yeah, it's Vegas trip. Right, right. He did a great job. Who doesn't really look much like Patrick Warburton? <laughs> but has the best name ever. Yeah. <laughs> right up there with Kid Beyond. Yeah. Go oh, sound effects. Hello. <laughs> Anybody in there? We had a hard time finding Salmon Max voice. Uh, yeah, that was a that was tough getting someone uh, to sound like a twelve-year-old pharaoh. Uh, I remember when the trailer came out, so many people assumed it was the geek. Yeah, it's like yeah, we're bringing in characters from entirely unrelated uh, media. Yeah. Why not? And then we thought Morgan Le Fay, of course. Yes, well, he's Morgan Le Fay. I can always hear the voices, the um, 
Caesarean from Rome. Yeah. All oh, right. All oh, right. That was and once that idea got stuck in my head, everything else sounded slightly wrong, and I think yeah. Mickey Rab really nailed it. Yeah. Was plan. I suppose you can take your pick between an ethnic sorcerer and a superpowered space gorilla. So there's no donuts in this episode. <laughs> no donuts. Very well. Shall It shouldn't be too much trouble with all these toys of the gods secreted in this fuzzy little body. Toys of the gods secreted. Yeah, I think we used secreted several times, and Max always has his own little hammer space. Yes, who we see later on. Yeah. Lighting wise, too, this uh, yeah. this one, like Derek, really sort of each episode just took it to a crazier and crazier level. And I remember a lot of the stuff in this just looks so good. Yeah, yeah, the atmosphere in the museum just lovely. Mm -hmm. That's it, Sam. Are you Sam? No, my name is Tyrone. <laughs> Sam's that guy. Just three. I've arrived at the world famous museum of mostly natural history. And look, a cute little animatronic. Is this wow. all the tourist abuse we managed to get this yeah. season? Yeah, it's like, oh, there is a little bit at the end. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't. Yeah. Uh, since I only programmed this first half, I thought the tourist was killed just now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, because like, he comes oh. back to be thrown into the uh, gladiator pit. Yeah, for a while there, he was uh, the whipping boy for the entire season. But right. He kind of scaled back on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was we didn't amazing like how naturally he just was like, oh, he's the victim. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> that later became paperweight. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my body's walking around without my brain. How'd you work that out? I found a loner in the creepy Egyptian exhibit. The nice thing that always appealed to me about having uh, Max's brain inside the planetarium, that it was kind of like our equivalent of the uh, meanwhile cutscenes in the Monkey Island series. Yeah. Where it would just cut off where you could see what the villain was doing without him standing there telling you what he's doing. But speaking of what villains are doing. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, the brain. You didn't stick the brain of a psychically gifted, unstable adolescent pharaoh in my cute little body. Yeah, we also had to work out the mechanic of how you would switch between, so you can switch between uh, Sam and Mac and Max's brain in a jar and Sam and figure out a way to be able to go between all those three guys. That's the, right, I remember you figured that out. Yeah, because we only have so many buttons on the PlayStation 3 controller that we can use. <laughs> Yeah, this is also pretty epic. Yeah. We need to build a better controller. Uh, no, like more buttons. Controller. I'm gonna do connect where you just make gestures. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. And then this is oh, my this, this is this is oh, my Watchmen homage. That's right. So ends another mind-boggling mystery solved by the loafing wits and the capriciously applied violence. I always wonder what people think right now. Yeah, what's going on? Sugar grenade. What the hell are you talking about, Sam? I'm still a brain in a jar. Don't be silly, Max. You've always been a brain in a jar. No, I haven't. I'm a short, sexy lagomorph. With There's a moment coming up. I don't know if it's in this uh, in this video, but uh, when Norrington stops you and uh, speaks to you from the sky, I put a. Uh, I was working on the next episode at the time, so I put a backwards uh, dialogue from the end of the next episode. I never, I never know if anybody found it though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now. There's the giant feet from the uh, teaser image of the villains yeah, yeah. for the season. <laughs> Those feet oh, end yeah. right above the camera line. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't wear shoes. Sam, snap out of it! Snap out of what? Our first version of uh, Sam and Macified New York was really quite like the original New York. Oh, yeah. oh, and we decided it needed a lot more See, there's Egyptianification. Yeah, there's yeah, backwards the, dialogue going on right now. Yeah. The, um... <laughs> The whole uh, after Sam and Mac has changed reality, I'd always pictured it as a uh, kind of invasion of the body snatchers thing where oh, Sam is the only brain. one, or I'm sorry, Max, Max is, is the only one, Max's brain is the only one who knows that things are wrong, but that looked like that ended up being way too subtle. Yeah. Yeah, and our... I think the when we play tested it, people were, I think, a little disappointed at the, the look of the, the Egyptian environments, because they weren't that... Egyptian. Like they were different, but they weren't that different. And I think after the playtest, uh, Derek, our, our director, went by and really made things look pretty cool. I always had a Super Marvelous 2 vibe to yeah, it to me, and I guess I'm not the only one who thought that. Mm. It was like in a day, too. Yeah, it was I remember quick. One yeah, day that was an unbelievably yeah, fast <laughs> transformation. Next day, I opened up the scene, and it was, everything was completely different. Wow. You're a fish? So are you a rebel or not? 
Oh, here's the return of. Uh, I love girl. bringing back more girl, more yeah. granny. I love the old look of her. It's, yeah. it's completely perfect. That's how she would look. <laughs> and she still has the coolest yeah. lateral list. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's weird. You never lose that, even yeah. without the retainer. <laughs> the brain screw. Pointy and dangerous, two of my favorite things. Bring the sacred <laughs> weapon close to Salmon Mac, and we'll take care of the rest. Bring the brain screw to Salmon Mac. Easy peasy. So part of the complication with this uh, that I was talking about earlier was, uh, <coughs> you know, Ma Max is, can either be a brain in a jar, or he can be rhinoplastied into objects walking around in the world, and we yeah. have to figure out ways of <laughs> making all of our animations work regardless of what the player was doing and yeah it that was unbelievably some, fun it involved <laughs> <laughs> oh god For best strange ever. definitions of fun that was it yeah that was fun yeah dennis enjoyed that <laughs> yeah. yeah that was I my know favorite he part <laughs> remember when you pitched that i don't think none of us really picked that up as a problem and then we were doing it we were like oh oh really yeah <laughs> Oh, we were. And especially with the cloud, because the cloud was like up high, so we had to bring them down. And, uh, yeah. Right, and keeping all those objects alive and real, and yeah. who and knows where they're talking from. I'm glad that we threw in a lot of red herring rhinoplasty objects, though, yeah. Yeah. because yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. You mean two? <laughs> it was only two. Yeah, when we cut some of each act, yeah. but it definitely made a difference. Ah, oh, <laughs> this is a sweet one. That's another. M I think that's a mice. Yeah, it's mice. Whoa, is there a boom mic? <laughs> That'd be great. Did anyone see that besides no, me? No, that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, maybe that's just the next brain in a jar. But that seems really unfair. It may seem unfair, buddy, but it's the only way those stinking rebels will learn to accept salmon match conscious rule. It's creepy when you're between the mole people and the. <coughs> Tourist. And we like to abuse certain characters. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I really like about this whole section that was part of Chuck's conception from the start was, you know, for the first time, Sam is working. He's not on the same team, or not entirely. Yeah. And you got to cope with his uh, different agenda. I got to know from somebody who was talking about that horrible bug they found where uh, half of Sam's tie stopped rendering. <laughs> it made me sad. His tie's been cut off. Like, did you game. not play the game? Yeah. And this is all where, Dennis right here. Where did the stars yeah. come from? Did you add that? This final fight. Yeah. yeah. That oh, that's awesome. classic. And then we get our Star Trek Three reference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I remember that Maya's like, at the very beginning of this episode, he was like, ah, oh, I get to do that part with cutting the tie, and that's all he cared about. And then at one point he got <laughs> scoped yeah. down, and then he was just destroyed, and then it got in at the end, which was great. Yeah. I think that made his uh, journey worth it over here. <laughs> See, that's the trick. You trick people into falling in love with things, and then yep. you cut them, and yeah. they do it anyway. Yep. It's very evil, subtle manipulation trick, by the designers. But effective. Good job. Oh, snap. Oh, oh, yeah. Violence. Yep. Nothing like taking the brain out of a 12 year old kid. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, what's this game reading? He's only 10, that's all right. Yeah. Part of me, we did wish that his tie had stayed uh, severed the, for the rest of the series. Yeah. But oh, that would have been nice. So we always talked about like tie gone, losing the hat. Like, yeah. <laughs> and at the end, he's just a, a broken. It's like our graduate goal was just to undress Sam as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that. And that'll about come. Us. It'll come. Yeah. It'll reverse watch him. And then it'll just get more undressed. Maybe the first oh. time I've seen this. I Actually, I don't think we've ever seen this in the cuts. That sound is gross. Lovely sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> and everything's back to normal. Back so yes. Is, uh, new. Ooh, it's tight in here. Oh, that demon broth must have fattened up my grill. Uh, we'll get you on a study diet of brain shrinking reality shows tomorrow. Now let's stow this troublemaking toy box someplace safe before another delusional jerkwad gets his hands on it. Is it unclear what happened to Paperweight right
Sam is coming. Sam is oh, there coming. he is. Sam is coming. You don't have to repeat yourself. And besides, That's I'm right here. Actually. Oh, God. <laughs> this is just like that dream I had last night. I wonder if he studied for his finals. Why don't you ask them? I love that one. They called them a uh, Rocky Horror Shorts for yes. Jason Finley's idea. Yes. Oh, God, that's <laughs> such a good idea. Yeah. Awesome. Max? Yes? Shouldn't I be waking up about now? Were they just supposed to be originally be in diapers or something? Shouldn't no. Shouldn't I be waking up now? <laughs> <laughs> a, good, a good question from a good dog. And what <laughs> you're asking yourself even now, along with who is the ominous Dr. Norrington? How did Monsieur Papierweight survive for over a century? Oh, and see, this what is the dealio. With they continued to abuse the paperweight. <laughs> I could could use the word dealio. I think. Or is that really used in our anymore. next chapter? Until then, my friends, sleep well. Mm. Ooh, foreshadowing. <laughs> Your guide to quality literature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, we'll see you for the next one. Yep.